Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show title pending podcast. We still don't know. I'm your host, Jason Baguero. I am Kevin Carpenter. And I'm Bravo. And audio engineer, Chris Ringel. And fuck Avid. What a terrible fucking editing program that is. I think we all can agree that that is a terrible, terrible program. I don't hate him uh, per se from like uh, as a professional summit. I hate him from the heart. Which is more personal? <laughs> it's giving me nightmares, and every time I see it, I throw up a little bit. What so, about you guys? So, so, so tell me, uh, Jason, what what is what is Avid like? Why do you hate it so much? Avid is basically everything that editors shouldn't deal with, and yet it's there. Why? Why is it there, Kevin? <laughs> well, uh, imagine this, Jason. Imagine you're in a, uh, a Egyptian pyramid, and you're you're going through these walls, and you can see that the 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 structure is great. After all, this has gone on for like thousands of years, and the pyramids are still there, and you can see there's a lot of work put into this. But also, the walls are covered in hieroglyphs, and you can't understand a damn thing about this place. And that's avid. You know it works, but it won't tell you how it works. No, it will not. And worst of all, when you try to configure it to your own liking, Jesus Christ, it's a mission. Chris, you had some experience with it. I have experience with it, but on a lot of the projects I've worked on, we've established early on that this is not an avid project. <laughs> only, only and rarely, I mean, I've been on, I've been able to work on shows, you know, legit TV shows where you do need avid, but that means they had the budget to, you know, be at a professional studio that, you know, you need to have the, the support for it, the CPU support, and then even once you get to the interface, it's like being in a U-boat or something. I don't know. You walk in and you have no idea what's going on. It's, it's, it's like, all in Russian. It, yeah. <laughs> it's like Nanny McPhee. When, when you need her, you don't want her. <laughs> <laughs> and I say it quietly like, I, I just use Adobe Premiere. I, I don't well, know I mean, I, I think we the thing is the production environment stems from two different worlds in like you have the obviously the TV movie side of it, the professional, professional, professional side. And then when it's a micro production, indie film, when it's um, anything else, whether, you know, corporate media advertising or something like that, you don't really need to have the the NASA space lab <laughs> required for Avid when you can just use Premiere. I mean, I think that's... So, in in layman's term, Adobe, please sponsor us. We could, use, <laughs> we could really use your programs. No, no lie, though. Doesn't it, like, because I'm pretty sure a lot of YouTube YouTubers, just mm. channels and all that, they use Premiere. I think Premiere is yeah, probably... Like, yeah. Well, my curiosity is why, what's the stem of your displeasure with Avid exactly? Is it a certain incident yes, uh, or just in general that you, are you, do you have to work with Avid? Uh, what, what, where's your, where's, why don't you like it? I, I, I know where you're going with this and um, fuck you. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> a therapist you, session. <laughs> and I just want to no. eat. I, I think it was more just when I took the class. That we used to have at Cal State. Oh Online. yeah, that's right. Oh okay. And I remember reading that manual, both the uh, editing and what was it the effects one, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was such a challenge, uh, and I was like, dude, this right here shows I'm not worthy to be an editor. <laughs> See, I think all I did was I would look over your shoulder and just copy what you did for my project, <laughs> and just be like, that'll do, pig. So that's why do. you can't edit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh <laughs> dang. Look, man, See, I'm just a pretty face. For what I, it's worth. <laughs> Wait, were you looking at me or him? I was. Uh, I was uh, no, yeah. Yeah, I lined, we were like in the same general direction. I went to Indiana University, so they taught us the same way they teach uh, much Midwestern lessons. Um, they throw it at you, and you gotta learn or die. And they give you a gun. Yeah. <laughs> well, Indiana is known for, in my opinion, uh, corn and crossbows. And I only oh. brought corn back with me on my recent trip because I couldn't get a crossbow on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, now look, son, you're going to have to harvest these corns and these crossbows. They're ripe for... <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we just grow them right out of the ground. You, you guys, you guys oh. ever had to, like, um, like, go out in the field and harvest shit? Mm -hmm. So am I the only, like, Mexican here? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I just picked it. Straight I never harvest. I used to. Ha I used to have a peach tree, so every now and then I'd go out and check and see if the peaches were ripe. But I mean, we had carpenter ants, so you see ants just digging. Uh, like, oh, okay, we can't touch that at all. And did then, you guys? Did you guys like have like trees where fruit grew? 
Like you, Kevin? Uh, not me. Well, my grandparents live in like the mountains of North Carolina. So whenever I would visit, you know, like there would be times when we go out and we get like uh, like green beans, yeah, and all that, uh, like soybeans, and like you know there was like fruit trees there too, but it was mostly like crab apples. Uh, but I mean, like you know, me, I'm a resident of white suburbia, so there wasn't a whole lot of like fruit trees around. I cut grass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every Saturday, I was, I was looking at you like, did you have anything? Like, you just like, I used to cut grass every Saturday at eight a.m. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my my legal child labor was like shoveling snow because Midwest. Yeah. See, they had the luxury of snow. Uh, did did I, did I tell you guys the story of whenever I when I first experienced snow for the first time? Yeah, and it almost broke my back. You fucking fuck you, Jason. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tell just real quick. So uh, my dad was just like, "Hey, son, why don't we take all the family friends up to Big Bear to experience snow?" Yay! Said ten year old me. I've never seen it. Cool. So we're driving all the way up there. My dad's got his chains on, all that whatnot, and he's coming up, and he's like, "Oh, I decided to take a stop." And for some reason, like another family stopped by there, all, also on their way to to Big Bear. And my dad started talking to them. So like, so you know how much is Big Bear and whatever the price? He's like, "Oh, fuck that." So we drive a little more upwards uh, up, up the mountain. He's like, well, we're here. And I'm like, Dad, it doesn't look like Big Bear or the uh, the photos I see. He's like, but it's snow and it's free. So before we went up there, we went to like the local big lots and got one of those like shitty plastic sleds, which apparently had like steering handles or some shit. So my dad decides, hey, son, it's your first time on the trip. Why don't you take it all the way to the top of this ravine uh, and just slide down. Okay, Dad, I trust you. So I fucking waddled my ass, my fat ass all the way up there because I was fat. <laughs> uh, and I put it down, and I'm like, I don't know if I should do this. And my dad happened to be right behind me. like, don't be a pussy. <laughs> and just pushes me. And it's like I turn around, and it's slow motion, like, why have you forsaken me, Father? <laughs> and I just start hauling ass down this thing. And it feels good. It feels good. I'm just like, oh, I feel the, like I feel the cold. Like, I feel so alive. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I have these steering wheels. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I better pump them at the same time to, you know, slow myself down. Well, uh, that's this big lot guaranteed. Uh, big lot's guaranteed. I pull on both of them, and I just happen to go under, like, jagged rocks, and this cheap plastic shit just breaks off. And I'm like, oh, that's no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I am beelining straight for the, the, the minivan that us and the family friends were in. And my mom's like, oh, look, he's coming down to look so happy. And I'm like, oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> and sure enough, I see this mound of snow. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll grab the sled and aim for it. You know, hopefully it'll slow me down. Turns out that was a stump. Um, so sure enough, here comes little Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> haul an ass and just hits it perfectly with that snow. I go flying at like a 45 degree angle. The sled goes over the minivan and I'm like, okay, imagine I'm sitting straight up, right? Now imagine me just slowly turning and my legs are to the sky. My head is to the ground. And I just like, like a professional wrestler grabbed me and threw me against the cage of like a cell and just boom. <gasps> And my mom was like, oh, Dios mio. <laughs> she's like, she's like, mijo, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, well, say something. <laughs> and my dad just, he's like, I won't take the other side. He just walks, he just runs down. He's like, get up, don't be a pussy. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Dude. <laughs> and that, reminds, that was my first time in the snow. <laughs> that reminded me of my camping trip. I used to go to a... Uh, Current River. Have you guys ever been there? No, no, no. Current no. River is a beautiful area, but it's called Current River because the river is fucking rushing down constantly. It's actually a dangerous spot to go swimming in, but if you go river rafting and all that, it's really fun. Well, little me used to go swimming there because I used to love to swim, and I'll never forget it. My dad and my mom were we were camping outside. No, we're rough camping too, and they're out there. Hey, what's rough camping? Basically, uh, you know, just like the way we did it with Caesar. Uh -huh. And the problem was, is that my mom doesn't like rough camping. She prefers more like going to a hotel camp, stay in the hotel, <laughs> than fucking go out yeah. and go sightseeing. We decided to do it this one time in a tent. So I'm in the water, and my dad turns around for a second, just looking at my mom or something, you know, talking, whatever. And the water just came and hit me. And I go, Phew! like, I'm like, I'm just gone. My dad turns like, Where's Jason? And he looked down the river. You just see my little head going down like, bye. <laughs> this is my life now. <laughs> my dad's like, oh, my God, in the water. 
And so he ran in the water and he gets me. He's like, yeah. Now we're like, what do we do now? He's like, shit. Because now he's in the water with me. And of course, mom's like, I got this. <laughs> no, my mom's like, Greg. <laughs> But uh, we made it alive. Oh, my it was God. just so funny. I was like, "What did it look like when I asked him all these years?" Like, he's like, "I just saw your little head just above water, and then like, <laughs> like imagine a rubber duck just kind of went with the flow. Just your head went with the current." Oh man, uh, you guys I, have any stories like that? Uh, I have a story kind of similar to Bravo. So uh, I also used to live in Maryland, and when I was like real little. And my house was on a hill, and at the end of the hill was like one of those, like, th- it, was, it was like a gutter with a bunch of, like, jagged rocks in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can kind of tell where the story oh, yeah. is going. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. So it was just kind of like, my, my friend and I, we're like, I don't know, seven at the time. And so we'd come up with a game where we'd get onto a sled at the top of the hill. We'd take the sled, you know, all the way down the snow. And then right before we hit the jagged rocks, we'd jump off the sled. You know, just kind of like a, you know, abandoned like a, ship kind of thing. It's a fun like game. Like a chicken kind of game. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there was one time, though, uh, in my little seven-year-old mind, I was just like, I wonder what would happen if I stayed on the sled. I'd look <laughs> really cool, wouldn't I? Yeah, you know what happens when a sled that's uh, you know going down the snow like really fast hits a rock? Yeah, the sled oh, stays know. there. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I bounce off the sled and then immediately land ass first onto a oh. big old rock. Ooh. And at that moment, my seven-year-old mind was just like, did I just break my butt? <laughs> I really hope I didn't just break my butt. <laughs> Thankfully, remind- I didn't break my butt. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, it, it reminds painful. me of, like, in the, the old Looney Tunes cartoons when, um, like, the, the wild E. Coyote is chasing after the Roadrunner and, like, let's say he hits a wall, but he's still in the same seating position as he's driving the car or whatever, just flying, flying, mm-hmm. and he reaches the edge of the cliff, and he looks down, and he's like, Oh my god! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you yeah. uh, ever grow up with Cartoon Network when they had Boomerang? Yes. Oh, yes. oh yeah, they still have Boomerang. No, no, I know that, but well, like they moved they, it to another channel, right? Like, it's just yeah. its own Boomerang. It's its channel. own channel yeah. now. But at one time, it would be like like a, I guess it's a section of of their TV time. Mm-hmm. At one time, yeah, they used to do all the like those old Hanna Barbera cartoons and all that. Do you guys remember the Pearls of Penelope Pit Stop or something? like Yes, that? of the, course. The, the Ann Hill Mob. It was like you ever seen that? No, I'm dude. It up. What? It, so if I remember the show correctly. Uh, Penelope Pitstop was her name, right? Mm-hmm. Penelope, yeah. Penelope um, Pitstop had this fortune, and her uncle, who was also the Hooded Claw, the bad guy, was trying to do everything he can to get her killed <laughs> so he could get her like fortune. Good, like a good uncle. Yeah. But for whatever reason, the Ant Hill mob, which were these little midget, like seven or eight gangsters <laughs> with their... Oh, what, I don't even remember what their car was called. I think it was called like the Chugabug or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they would do everything in their powers to like stop him from killing her. And every episode was the same. And he always was like, I'll get you one day, Penelope Pit Stop. And he had like this really evil laugh yeah. to go with. Yeah. It was, I don't know why. That just When you talked about Looney Tunes, that brought that back to well, me. Well, you have like this sick voice for the Inspector Gadget thing, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, get you want me to do it? Yeah, the Claw. Yeah, the, the, the Claw. The claw. Oh, I'll get you next time, Gadget. <laughs> Chills. Sick. Damn. Inspector. Um, <laughs> I remember the um, the last time I ever saw Cartoon Network in my own home was right before the premiere of Kids Next Door. Ah, uh, you guys remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, Cartoon Network was just promoting the hell out of this show, saying it's gonna be the next this and that. It's gonna be amazing, and I'm like, whoa! It's kids who like do adult stuff, have like mechs and shit, fighting each other, or fighting other people. I was so excited. I remember the week leading up to it. I'm like, all right, it's gonna appear on Friday. I'm gonna you know finish my schoolwork. I'm gonna rush home. I'm gonna finally get to see this show. So, in lieu of my good old father's fashion, I come home and. How the how the TV was placed was right in front. Like the second you you come into the apartment, you could see the TV and everything there. You could see everything, even like the VCR back then, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the the cable box and everything. And I walk in, and I just had a habit of always looking at the cable for some reason, always having this under underlining feeling that it's one day gonna be gone. And th- today, I did not have that feeling. I was like, "There's no way." So sure enough. I bust in that door, throw my backpack on the ground, throw my sweater, even though it was like 98 degrees. Uh, <laughs> and oh, I'm like, kid. And I was that kid, yeah. Uh, I was just like, heck yeah, time to watch Kids Next Door. Awesome, I'm gonna get ready. And sure enough, I take a pause and I, and I see, I'm like, what? Why, why, do, why do I see the back of the, of, of the TV stand? What? Mother? 
<laughs> Mother, where's the box? But of course, all this is in Spanish. <laughs> madre, 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 where's the box? On the style box sale. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Madre? She's like, What is it, son? He's like, Where is the cable box? And she's like, Oh, yeah, your father took it in, like, for repair? <laughs> she's like, Oh, no, he wanted to save like five bucks or ten dollars so that because the guy was gonna, I knew that we were gonna get rid of the, the cable, but like till Sunday or, or Monday. So I was like, All right, I'm gonna get this one show in. No, my dad, in order to save like ten dollars, took it in by himself that day before he left to work. And that moment, I heard my neighbors, the next door, going, yay, as the kids next door theme started blasting in. And then you could just cut to like little old me and for some reason sitting on like a wooden stool alone in my room just like, Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, Jesus, I guess I'll go to Channel 5. You never had the black box growing up? No. <laughs> you guys remember the black box? Oh, yeah, I remember yeah, that. I'm totally. Who had one? My grandma. I, would I, have, I am not a liberty to, I am not I a liberty to I say. One. You know what that was? No. Basically, before, so, you know how, like, now we can just rip everything off the internet? Yeah. Back in the Which day. Which we do not do here. Okay. Totally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, back in the day, the black box was basically a way you could steal cable without, oh. without, without getting charged. And all it was was just basically you went up to the, I think the phone line, you just connected it on there. And you, you could splice the phone connection. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, you got everything. Everything. Pay-per-views. The you porn channels. Porn channels. <laughs> you got. Actually, it was funny. I remember my folks had like a parent lock on it because you still put parent locks on them for whatever reason. I was like, is it just one, two, three, four? And it wasn't. So I was like, okay, what about zero, zero, zero? It wasn't. And I realized it was, uh, I don't want to say it out loud what yeah. it was because they still use the code. Uh. But it was that. <laughs> it was obvious. And I saw all kinds of things. <laughs> And you could thank the black box for the Jason that is today. It is. <laughs> you know, speaking of old cartoons, so you know what I uh, found out about Hanna Barbera that like inspires me. To what? Say? So like you know how Hanna Barbera cart you know cartoon characters like you know Snagglepuss, Yogi Bear, <laughs> uh, Fred Flintstone, they always had like ties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they wore nothing else, they would have a tie. Uh, e even Scooby Doo had a collar. It's because uh, Hanna Barbera was uh, crap at drawing necks. <laughs> Literally, like so, he would be able to animate the body separately and then the head separately, and then all of his characters would just have something connecting the head and the body, so he can animate the two things separately. So that way, he would never have to animate a neck. <laughs> really, that is a, that is his man of engineering quality. That, that's inspiring. This man found a flaw, and rather than trying to improve it through hard work, he found a workaround. <laughs> <laughs> he took the easy way out. <laughs> He's the most famous <laughs> name in cartoons to this. Day, he's like, so yeah. Mr. Barbera, how did you feel when they figured out that secret? I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was already dead when they found that out. <laughs> I'm like, dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you guys this: mm. Growing up, were you guys the anime fans? Oh yeah, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon uh, Ball Z all the way. For, for, uh, Chris, I, I love the hell out of Gundam. Anything Boo. growing up. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Gundam did it. I know Gundam has a huge following. I remember watching Mobile Suit Gundams when it first came in to like the United States, at least when I saw it. Hell of a Well, the thing was, Gundam was a lot like Dragon Ball Z for me, where I would turn on the TV, and if they're not fighting, I'm not watching. So <laughs> it's like, you're yeah. trying to like, okay, this is a filler episode. Nothing's happening here. It's like, are they going to fight? No, they're talking. Okay, because I was like, what, 10 years old? I yeah. didn't care about the drama. It's like, look, I need robots. And Okay, fine, Power Rangers. All right, we're good. <laughs> I love you, protagonist. I love you, female protagonist. Boring. <laughs> Dude, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Do you remember the first episode you watched of DBZ? Because for me, I remember chiming in. It was in the middle of the Saiyan saga. So I, I missed the Raddus. Uh, the, oh, the, the Raddus stuff, yeah. When Raddus yeah. first came. But fucking Chaozu had just blown up. <laughs> like I remember just seeing Chaozu blowing up. I go, Chao what the fuck? Like, like I think, oh, okay, he just did a bomb thing. But I'm like, whoa, what, what happened to him? He's like fucking gone. Tien just got killed. Piccolo just sacrifices himself. So I'm like at the party. And then Goku just fucking uh, Superman punched Nappa in the stomach. And then Vegeta killed him. And I was like, holy fuck. What did I just stumble into? <laughs> what did and, then I miss? When, and then when you watch that first fight between Goku and Vegeta, dude, my little braid was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And I, did, I was like saying to myself, nothing can get better than that. And then you get to the Frieza saga. 
And they said, oh, no, we're going to go that times 10. <laughs> pause. Okay. Okay, pause. We can't really pause. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Been locked out. Damn it, Kevin. Why is your beautiful face on? This is why we use an H4N. This is how we do it. No, this is why we use a computer at home. This is how we do it. It's Friday. I I like beatboxing. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, rolling in five, four, three. So the first episode of Dragon Ball that I ever saw was actually Dragon Ball. The the original ah. one. Uh, mm. My dad, f- he came home one day. Spanish or English? Uh, I know Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, okay. Spanish. Um, Way came, better in he, Spanish. He, he came home one day saying, look, son, because at the time I was watching Pokemon, uh, back when it premiered in Mexico, and I was like, wow, I want to I be like, Ash, catch him. And then he's like, he sucks. Uh, <laughs> what? I, I'm, I'm I'm trying desperately to come up with a Spanish Dragon Ball like joke in my head. That's why I'm making this. El spaces. Dragon Bolo. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I got it! I got it! Kame, Kame, adios! <laughs> I got a better one. No offense. Go. <laughs> <laughs> a la verga! <laughs> oh my god! For our Spanish speakers, no, you know exactly what that means. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but like he came home one day, he's just like, "Hey, look, son, you like this this cartoon crap, right?" <laughs> he's pretty much. Of course, everything I say that my parents say, it's all in Spanish, uh, and I'm like, "See." Sí. <laughs> and he's like, here you go, son. And it was like like six six VHS tapes. And I think it was all the way up to when uh, Goku turns into the ape when he's like in that cell. Um, oh, so that The is... Red Ribbon Army, I think it's something like that? No, 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 no. Oh. You're, that's when um, Emperor Pilaf? Pedro Pia. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, whoa, that looks cool. I wonder if I could. I, I think that's maybe the time when he did the, the Kamehameha wave. I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. And so here comes the next day after school. I'm in the backyard. Well, what, what's considered the backyard is just like a small little alley of cement. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, I'll, I, I can make this happen if I try hard enough. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. Imagine a little old me going, Kamehame. <laughs> over and over for like two hours to the point where I lost my voice. Just yelling, just come on. And sure enough, the neighborhood alley cats or whatever would just look at me with just like, this fucking fool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I will never give up. And my mom's like, boy, get your ass back in here. Stop fucking up with the cats and disturbing the neighbors. You're never going to do this come bail, whatever the hell. Eat your beans. <laughs> On that topic, do you guys have a superpower that like, even though you know 99.9999% sure you don't have it, you still try every now and then. Cause for me, uh, it's it's like it's like telekinesis. Oh. Like there there I'd say like once maybe every six months, you know, I'll just be like doing my normal thing and then there'll just be a cup on the table and I'll just be like just kind of stare really hard at it for a minute. Just like, come on, come on, you can do it. Come on. I'm so bored right now. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you stare at a spoon and you just wish it bends? You're just staring at it and you're like, come on, bend? Maybe a little bit? Yeah, it, it's just like, it, it's like, I feel like out of the power of my sheer boredom, I can just like, <laughs> like if if the sheer boredom of someone can't bend a spoon psychically, I don't know what emotion you can really conjure to like activate your psychic prowess. For me, it would have to be like sense. I guess in a sense, like, shut the fuck up. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Sense in the sense of the sense. 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 (laughs) Was like, uh, if I could sit very still and somehow like activate something in my body, I could feel the presence of people not in the room, like them walking around or like talking and like, I guess really focus and hear things that I wouldn't otherwise hear. So you want the power of yoga? Yoga? (laughs) <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, that's my superpower but that also comes from me being bored or very very paranoid of my surroundings mm-hmm. like what the fuck was that oh it's just the neighborhood cat you, you should <laughs> see if you can try like practicing echolocation or something like pretty that pretty much yeah, yeah pretty much like elo- yeah. echolocation it's like, <laughs> it's like you want the daredevil power but you want to see stuff yeah I, mm-hmm. I still want to see, no, I, see <laughs> I guess my power I, I feel like I have my power though yeah. it's oh. the, the strength and patience to not kill people <laughs> that annoy me <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a violent person. When you get me mad 
and I'm in my car and I see you in my peripheral, I was like, I could just hit this gas and then run you over in like just a second. And all my problems about you are gone. Everything else will start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, granted, the cops are going to come, but I've always needed a reason to go to Mexico. <laughs> I got one now. <laughs> so please, help me make that dream come yeah. true. Let me kill you. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Um, I feel like my power has to be, right now, it's, it's my dream to be as fast as I think I am. Like almost Dragon Ball Z level fast, but apply that to Smash Bros. Like my ah. dream is to be that annoying guy with Sonic where for at least I want five minutes, a good five minutes of fighting someone where they try to hit me and I just dodge everything humanly possible. Like when Goku just hits that level when he can just like move his head and dodges every hit, dodges every hit, dodges every hit. And the thing is, I always felt like I had these reflexes because I almost had a car accident. And it was that thing where Damn, I you, <laughs> I basically flew through an intersection because I thought I was braking. I had to basically jam on my brakes, but mm. the brakes were pumping in a way where had I not moved, I was going to rear end a pickup truck Ooh. and I was driving a van. So basically, you know, big engine, top heavy downhill momentum. I was about to plow through this guy's car. So <clears throat> he had to jam on his brakes. I had to jam on the brakes, but I knew I was going to hit him. So I dodged it, and then basically everything that led up to that moment, I basically dodged like three cars, and I had to pull over to the side and stop. And to that day, I can't remember what happened. It's just like four events, that four motions that I had to do steering-wise, and I was like, I, I can't, to this day, I cannot reprogram, like revision what happened. It's just reflexes, pure reflexes and instinct. And ever since then, I was like, I wonder if I have like superhuman reflexes or something. So I never like box, I never got in a fight, but I always think like I want that to happen in any kind of fighting game, mainly Smash Bros. And just annoy the crap out of all you guys once I get good with Sonic. That's and, the plan. And then you'll be like, yare, yare. <laughs> so, so, the, so the real superpower that you want is to get good. <laughs> <laughs> what you're trying to say is you want to be in that guy in my peripheral. Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying to me? <laughs> I'm not good at Smash Bros. So it's, yes. And so when he when he's playing Sonic and Smash Brothers and he's about to die, he's like, I gotta go fast. Oh yeah. That. <laughs> like, that was, that's what you were yeah. gonna say. I thought remember, I, remember the whole Sonic thing where like when Sonic's dying, he goes, "Gotta save the world. Gotta go fast." <laughs> <laughs> What were you gonna say, Kevin? Uh, I've actually had like a like a reflexes moment like that a couple of times, but the the most recent one was uh, I was on a shoot and this one guy was wearing this like Easy Rig mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, yeah. camera apparatus. It's basically a backpack with a metal pole that sticks up above your like head, a crane, and, it, and, and then leans forward. So it's that way, so that yeah. way can carry the camera. It's a steady rig, right? Like yeah. a like a vest one. It was it was like a yeah, it was like a steady rig. Yeah, yeah, those I, are cool. Yeah, but think of a big the, the, crane. The thing is, it wasn't secure, so it kind of mm. wobbles side uh. to side. And uh, the person that was wearing it wasn't supposed to be wearing it. And, uh, you know, he was just, like, messing around with it. Uh, and at one point, oh, he no. sw he swings the thing around to spin, like, a full 360. And it's that exact moment that I'm walking behind him. Oh. And here's the thing. Um, I didn't realize what had happened until I was already tilted at a 45-degree angle. <laughs> I, I, I was tilted, and then I was just like... What just happened? And then, like, my brain, like, caught up. And it's just like, oh, hey, that thing swung. And you dodged it. I'm like, body, how did you know that was about to happen? Mm -hmm. And the rest of the crew was just, like, looking at me. And I'm just, like, I just, like, slowly straighten out. I'm like, you you take that off. Just You, should, you, you don't get to wear you that You should have looked at him. You're like, and don't you ever forget it. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of, because when you said, you know, you were talking about people who are doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. I was on the shoot one time. It was a 10-hour shoot. It, it ended up being a 10-hour shoot, but like it was lunch break. The producer, for whatever reason, decided to like we'll play back the footage that wasn't like you, like you know when you get like the cameras, and if you don't know how to set it, you could screw up on your settings. They ended up deleting. There was a three-camera setup. They ended up deleting camera A footage on their like. And this was like, and these are the kind of cameras, you know, that can continue filming for long periods of time. They deleted camera A, the main camera. Bum, 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 for all of you who don't know what that truly feels if you're not any in the world of film like we are. Kicked in the genitals. Ima <laughs> uh, not only that, imagine spending 
three days putting together a 5,000 piece crossword puzzle to right as you're about to put that final piece, your asshole of a cat comes in and takes a shit on it and then scrambles it all around and then claws your face and then shits on it again. That's just the first seconds when you find out your film has been deleted. Very apt metaphor, but also you don't know what a crossword puzzle is. D- did you mean Scrabble? I scrabble. <laughs> Oh, damn! (laughs) I'm the manager. (laughs) Kevin's on point today. One point for Kevin. Why aren't you manager? (laughs) Kevin, I get it. You're a writer, okay? (laughs) But I made a jigsaw uh, puzzle. (laughs) Oh! Yeah, that's that's live. That's on. That's that's going. That's on. That's going on. That's that's going in the can. We're not scrapping that. (laughs) Oh fuck! Uh, How are we on time? Is that good? We are at thirty minutes. So we can either come up with are a closer we, Are we or keeping that in? Oh, we're keeping that one in. No, we're, we're, we're not fucking No, we're keeping that 30 we're minutes. Keeping that in. <laughs> uh, I mean... Well, that about does yeah, it for this about episode. Yeah, this that about does it. Show title yeah, that's a good way to end it. We're almost uh, community. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, check out some of our other content. Uh, our new show, uh, Rolling in the Mist, has uh, premiered. And uh, it's spectacular. If you want an interesting and creative story told by a wonderful uh, master of ceremony, Kevin Carpenter, and see the adventures of two idiots <laughs> trying to be, you know, useful in a mysterious world, that's the place to go. And uh, I don't think we ever actually established this, is welcome Chris Rangel to the Odd Lude family. You Boo. poor bastard, you make a very horrible choice. Oh, jeez. Little, little golf clap for you. Boo. There it is. Was I your only choice? Uh, yes. It was you <laughs> or the trash can. <laughs> And uh, you kind of filled the bag better. Yeah. Uh, so you, you still have to go through initiation, which means you do have to eat the unicycle. Oh, that is true. Okay. Yeah. And you got to do it fast. I'll do my best. Talk about the ovulator. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to this episode of Show Title Pending. Uh, we still don't know what to call this. Uh, and <laughs> goodbye.